Hi there, my name is Dr. Marissa May, and we're going to take a look at some of the topics for week one of our college algebra class. So I hope you've got your pencil and paper ready, um, and you feel free to pause the video as we're going through. Maybe there's a concept you're like, oh, I want to jot that down before we continue with the example. It's the beauty of having the recording here is that you can always pause through um, to make those quality notes that are going to help you with the assignment. So let's jump right in. Our first week is going to be a little bit about a hodgepodge of different concepts. So these are math concepts that you may have encountered before, but they may also be brand new to you. And so we're going to take them step by step. So hopefully that you can get some um, good experience. You can get some reminders of, oh, yeah, that's how we did that back maybe in a previous math class. So let's take a look. The first topic I want to discuss is the order of operations. So you can see there on the left, we've got this beautiful order of parentheses and exponents. Step three and four, I want you to put a note that you're going to do those in order from left to right. So that's multiply or divide in order from left to right. And five and six, you're going to add or subtract in order from left to right as well. You may have heard this as PIMDOS, which is the acronym with the first letters in each of those. You may also have heard, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. That's a phrase that many uh, times we use in a math class to help students remember this order. So let's use that as we dive in here to problem number one. So in problem number one, you can see that we do not have any parentheses or exponents. So we're going to get to skip those steps. Then we come to multiply or divide in order from left to right. So we look, start at the left side of this problem and we come to subtraction. We don't want to do that first. We, then we come to multiplication. Now you can see I underlined the 14 times 3 because it is what I want to do. It's what I want to calculate first. So 14 times 3 gives me 42. And you can see that I replaced the 14 times 3 with the 42. So now I have uh, completed the multiply step. And next I want to do the division. So I, again, I skip that subtraction and I come to the 42 divided by 6. Well, that is 7. So we replace the 42 divided by 6 with a 7. And now we have 15 minus 8, which gives me, I'm sorry, 15 minus 7, which gives me 8. And this is how I come evaluate an expression using the order of operations here. It makes it a lot simpler if I will follow my steps. Now, let's look at problem number two. It's going to be a little bit more difficult. So I hope you can see from some of the concepts I'm going to do, I'm going to baby step you into a concept. So I'll start with an easy problem. Then we'll take it like to a level two. We may go to a level three, depending on the concept. So let's look at step number two. Step number two is written as a fraction, which is kind of deceiving for a lot of people. But I want you to think of the top of this fraction, we call that the numerator, as being in parentheses. Even though those parentheses weren't written, it is implied that they are there. And then also in the denominator, it again, it is implied that the um, parentheses are there. So if I were to write this problem out in one line, instead of being written as a fraction, I would write it as 2 times 7 plus 5 times 3, and then I would divide by 30 minus 29. So writing it like this, a lot of times for students, just takes at, down the difficulty because they're no longer dealing with this concept of or this mental block with fractions. So let's look. Now we're going to calculate inside the parentheses. We're going to begin with multiplying. So four times, sorry, two times seven gives me 14, and five times three gives me 15. I want you to notice that I calculated all of the multiply in this problem first. And then I'm going to go back and do, still working inside the parentheses, I'm going to work through the addition and subtraction inside the parentheses first before I do that division outside. So 14 plus 15 gives me 29. Notice that just cut, now that I have a number, I've dropped those parentheses, okay? And then 30 minus 29 gives me 1. 
And then finally, now that the parentheses are gone, you can see there's only one operation and that's division. And so I get 29. You want to be very methodical about your order of operations. What I mean by that is to go down your order like a checklist. Parentheses. Did I do everything in the parentheses? You might even put a check by it. I have many students who do that because it helps them to remember and helps them to stay focused on what they do in each step of the problem. All right, friends, let's take this to a level two now. So in level two, I want to use, um, you're going to start seeing exponents being added. So let's take a little bit of time to discuss what an exponent is. So if you have something like three to the second, like we have here in problem number three, be real careful because that does not mean three times two. I have a lot of students that think it does, okay? So instead, I want you to think three to the second power means to write the three two times. So we write the three two times and then we multiply. So three times three actually gives me nine, not six. Okay, so let's go back to problem number three now. We're looking at the order of operations. I see the exponents. Well, first of all, we didn't have any parentheses. We got to skip that step. Next, we go to the exponents, and three to the second power would give me nine. And then look, I have this six to the second. So come over to the side. Six to the second means to write the six two times and multiply. And that gives me 36. Okay, now I've taken care of the exponent. I can go on with my order of operations now. So next we have multiply or divide in order from left to right. So for us, the multiply happens first. So 90 times 10, or sorry, nine times 10 gives me 90. And then I have the divide, 36 divided by 12 would give me three. Now we're down to one operation. 90 minus three gives me 87. Now, this would be a wonderful time in our session for you to press pause and try problem number four first without me. And then press the play button again and you'll be able to determine if you got it right or not. So, Go ahead and hit that pause button if you want to try problem number four on your own. And those of you who are just going to go ahead and solve problem number four, remember, we're going to follow that order of operations, which says to do parentheses first. So two times three gives me six in that parentheses. Now, friends, notice that I am rewriting all of the stuff leading up to that parentheses. So two times three gives me six. And we are done now with the parentheses. All right. Next, we do the exponent. So three to the second. Remember, we're going to write that three two times. And we're going to multiply. So three times three would give me nine. All right. So next, we have done our parentheses, we've done our exponents, now we're multiplying or dividing in order from left to right. Now, friends, this is our first time to have to divide first. See, because the division comes first on the left, we have to divide first. So 16 divided by 4 gives me 4. And again, I write it all out. And now I'm looking for multiply or divide in order from left to right. So my next Multiplier divide is right there. Four times nine gives me 36. Now, I don't have an operation written right there. I don't have an add, subtract, multiplier, divide written there. It is understood to be multiply. When a number is written in front of, or when an expression is written in front of a parentheses, it's understood to be multiply. So this really means six times six. And six times six we know is 36, and nice for us. Now we just have the subtraction, and we get zero. Now you may go, that's a lot of work just to get zero. <laughs> and you're right. But see, I'm still the instructor. I'm still the teacher that loves. Like I get super excited when we end up getting zero, or x equals one, or something like that. I'm crazy like that. I love 
calculations and logically finding solutions. So you're going to find out that about me in this course. <laughs> so I'm going to pause there and we will hopefully get to come back to some more of these topics. But this gives you a great start to week number one. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to send them to me. I would love the opportunity to help in any way that I can. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye for now.